What's going on, Comic Nation? And welcome to another episode of Media vs. Comics. For those of you guys who are new, this is a series where we take a look at various comic book characters and teams from across both DC and Marvel, and we compare them to their movie counterparts. And we ask the question, which one's better? The comic book version or the movie version? And in this video, we're going to be talking about Captain America. So what's really cool about Captain America and Marvel Comics is that we can quite literally trace the growth of Marvel from the 1960s up until the current day by simply looking at Steve Rogers. And this is where his character becomes unique. In the comic book versions and the comic books themselves, Steve Rogers initially starts off in the 1960s as a reflection of the 1960s. He does what needs to be done, but society wasn't ready for a darker character. They weren't ready for the kind of character that we see in the Marvel Cinematic Universe version of Steve Rogers. Steve Rogers has the leadership, uh, I guess, concept. He has a leadership role where he basically almost immediately becomes a leader of the Avengers after he is uh, found and revived by the Avengers in Avengers issue number four. But from that point going forward, he really wasn't as hard hitting and as dark as we had usually seen. He was more methodical. He was the planner. He was the person that said there always has to be a way to do the right thing. Now, this really changed entirely once we got into the 2000s because by that point, we now had the Ultimate Universe in Marvel Comics. And the Ultimate Universe was a reimagined imagining of Marvel characters for a more modern age, I guess is the best way to put it. And so Marvel had to find a way to also keep their Earth 616 continuity relevant in the face of the Ultimate Universe's existence. And so this is when we started to see Captain America become a little darker and do the kind of things that needs to be done. And this really came to a head with Civil War. Civil War was when we saw Captain America step into the role of being pushed to the limit. We had never really seen a point where Captain America had become that dark, where he had become that sinister, where he was so so lost in the, uh, I guess, the message of what it was he was trying to achieve that he forgot what the actual goal was. He became a character who basically went underground, who started using guerrilla warfare tactics, who saw Tony Stark and S.H.I.E.L.D. as an enemy as opposed to a group that he should have been working with. And this was really highlighted more so than anything as we had discussed in our Civil War series once Civil War began to come to an end. And we saw that an interview was conducted with Captain America where he was basically told he lost his way. He just hasn't quite, uh, I guess, gotten back to the roots of what what it was that made him effective in the first place. Now, with the Marvel Cinematic Universe version of Civil War, I'm sorry of Captain America, what's really cool about him is that he immediately is the character that we know from Civil War, and this is what's really intriguing. Captain America from the Marvel Cinematic Universe is effectively Captain America from Mark Miller's Civil War. That's the Captain America that we see. As soon as Chris Evans steps onto the scene as Captain America, it's no holds barred. He does whatever it is that needs to be done, and he has no qualms about stepping into the role and telling people that they're wrong, about stepping into the role and telling people they need to change things otherwise they're going to find themselves and society as a whole in a very dark place and this was never more evident than the scene we saw in Captain America the Winter Soldier when Chris Evans was conversing with Nick Fury and stated that this new uh, I guess weapons program that he had basically implemented alongside Tony Stark was not freedom that it was fear this really highlights the Mark Miller version of Civil War most or more so than anything that we've ever seen in the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe with Captain America thus far in addition to this what we found was that with Captain America in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and his conflicts with Grumlow and his conflicts with uh, other individuals with uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. as a whole once S.H.I.E.L.D. had been taken over by HYDRA. This was, again, the very essence of Civil War Captain America. And so the question has to be asked here, at the end of the day, if we had to compare one to the other, if we had to look at Captain America from Civil War and from the comic book industry as a whole, and we had to look at Captain America from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which one comes out on top here? Which one is the absolute best? Is it the comic book version or is it the movie version? Honestly, <laughs> my vote goes to the comic book version. I think the comic book version of Captain America is a little bit better here. And there's a couple reasons for this. The first reason is because with the Marvel Cinematic Universe version of Captain America, we've seen one dynamic of him. We've seen one element of him. He's fighting on behalf of freedom, and that's it. That's really all we've seen with his character. Now, that's because a lot of the stories that we've seen, or I guess the movies that we've seen with Captain America so far, have always been in the midst of conflict. There's never really been an instance where he's been able to stay away from conflict 
and they've been able to focus on him as a character in terms of what makes Steve Rogers tick. We've gotten a little bit of this in the sense that we saw his reaction, or I guess his interaction with Peggy Carter after she had developed Alzheimer's in uh, Captain America the Winter Soldier. We saw his interactions with Peggy Carter in Captain America the First Avenger, and we of course saw his interaction with other members of the team in, uh, in the Avengers film. Now what I will give Captain America from the Marvel Cinematic Universe credit for is that he maintains the same kind of leadership role as he did in the comics. He's just as effective in the comic books and in terms of leadership as he is in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But at the end of the day, this is really just a circumstance whereby the catalog of Captain America's stories in Marvel Comics is so large that there's just so much to the character in the comics that we've seen in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And so it may be that a year from now, it may be that two or three or four years from now, that once we finish with Infinity War and we get more into the Marvel Cinematic Universe in future phases, that his character may expand. But for right now, I've got to give this one to Captain America from the comic books. With that being said, let me know how you guys feel. Let me know which one you guys prefer. And let me know in the comments section what other characters you'd like me to do videos on with regards to media versus comics. With that being said, I will catch you guys later. Peace. Be sure to follow me on Twitter. There you can keep up with all the updates from Comics Explained and talk to me directly.